Howdy folks, Kirk here with Kirk Giordano Plastering, Jason on the camera. A um, fellow by the name of Alex Sears from Venice Beach, California asked me a question which I'm trying to answer him a couple times and he says, Kirk, how come you don't show projects that you've done years ago? We don't have the opportunity, Alex, but today we do have the opportunity. If you could show this, we did this house about 17 to 20 years ago. Kind of interesting because we did a traditional three coat drive it system here. We did scratching a brown coat over chicken wire and then we did a, an acrylic drive it finish on it. Now, that was about 20 years ago. Follow me, Jay. About seven, 10 years ago, we did the foundation, which um, you can see the color difference, but that's seven years later. We did the foundation all the way around the entire home. I'll show you some other stuff we did back here, which is kind of interesting. If you folks have noticed the lattice work in the front, well, we did this garage too in 09. Now back in 09, he said, Kirk, I want to copy that same detail. And I thought, oh, come on now. No, you don't. But anyway, this is all wood and we stuck with all this lattice detail here as well as here. And what we did here is the same conventional uh, three coat system is, or traditional, we did the scratch and the brown coat. We let each one of those set and then we did the, uh, the acrylic finish here. I'll show you what we're actually doing today. We've got to hike up and come on back here. <clears throat> now, the fellow here says, gee, Kirk, you remember when you did this? And I thought, slightly and I was looking at it and I remember this fibers mesh um, let's see if the camera will pick up some of the so all these little fibers coming out of the stucco rocks little fibers back in um, well back when we did this we used a product there were three main ones. I'm not certain which one we use there's La Habra Western and Omega it's a reinforced fibered mesh where you do a scratch in a brown coat same day back 20 30 years ago the technology wasn't the same as today so they added all these fibers and the fibers was because it set so fast that it didn't crack. Did it crack? Yes, it did. Do the finishes today crack with uh, new technology? Yeah, sometimes, but that's the nature of stucco as you do both coats that can crack. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, uh, double, double back this up. We're going to do the scratch in the brown coat uh, same day as we're here. We're going to allow that to set. Now, why are we going to allow that to set when some of the products I know of today, we can do the color coats? Because this color coat is an acrylic color coat. Now, an acrylic color coat needs a minimum of 28 days. Say if you do a scratch and a brown um, base coat. I'm not aware yet, folks, of any product that says you can color coat same day or within a week, except for uh, Eisenwall, but that's a cementitious finish, which is porous. The finish that we have here is sealed. It's uh, an acrylic. Uh, so the acrylics, you have to wait at least 28 days. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to go ahead and scratch and brown this. And are, are we going to use the same material I used 20 years ago? No, uh, we're not even using fibers on this. However, we are going to allow that to set for 28 days. So Jay and I are going to show you how we just throw that coat on. And next time we come back to do this color finish, here's another tip, guys. If you've been watching us, you know these kind of things right here. See this wall, it's, uh, I believe the color is French vanilla, but it's 20 years old. So he did so much work here. I can see all the dust that's accumulated on this. Most people in the city won't have a lot of dusty work. In the country, yes, but he's redid this whole yard landscape. And, and so it's full of dust right here. So that's why when we go to color coat this, I'd normally try to blend a, a, a color within a color with an acrylic. You can do that if it's say six months but this 20 years, it wouldn't work. So we're going to go corner to corner. But that's another day uh, from now. Right now, all we're going to do is, is scratch and brown this. So we're trying to give you guys some tips on, on the way stucco works. For example, if you guys wanted to apply a Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish to your house, you would type in on our keywords how to apply a Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish. And a video would come up, voila, take you right to that and show you how it's done. Can you guys do it? Maybe, possibly, but I doubt it. Anyhow, our site is designed to try to show you 
no matter you type in the keywords what you're looking for and it will a video will come up to show you how we in the plastering trades do it just so if you're like us and you want to know how things work you can see how things work all right guys we're doing the fun stuff now this, we're going to scratch and brown this now generally what i'll do is i'll just come in here jay is mixing it up for me and i'm just taking it out of this bucket with a scoop basically what I'm going to do is both coats back to back immediately, almost like what we did 20 years ago, except we're using a different type of material here. This is the fun part for us. I can do this all day long. Jay's about to mix me up another bucket. If you guys are watching this, you always want to push up into your joints, especially on the top like this. Push up, push up. The sides, push in there. That's less likely to hairline crack if you do that, guys. Probably enough in here for me to finish the scratch coat. Then Jay's going to go ahead and mix me up the last bucket to, or the next bucket to finish the next coat on here. Nothing to it, guys. There we go, first coat. Do I need to put scratch marks in here? No, because I'm doing back to back immediately. Okay guys, Jay mixed me up some more mud. When I scratched this one, I went ahead and scratched and browned this one, allow this one a little extra time to set. We are using a same day material and it does set fast. So back to this. Now here's my second coat. And again, I allowed that to set. Oh a good 15 minutes and you can see Jay just mixed this and this stuff is getting hot already that's okay we can handle it you get tired guys I always rest my Elbow right on that leg right there. If I'm on it that way, I'm using no effort. Pull it off. And again, guys, this is just a skim coat. Uh, we're doing a color coat over this, so it doesn't have to be pretty. One more trial full, and that'll get me what I, what I need. Say, for example, Okay, I put this here. Now, I can feather this out with my uh, trowel, but for the sake of you folks, I'll use a darby. You come up, and if you have any excess, put it where you need it. Right there. Excess, put it where you need it. Let's see, where do I need it? That middle is a little hollow. And what I'm doing is I'm using my, the wall as a ground. Say like this side, for example. I need a little bit there. And when I got all that done, this I allow to set. And then I take a sponge float. And guys, you don't have, you don't, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could come with a trowel and pull it here. You could, wait 15 to 20 minutes hard rubber floated you could sponge float it like so the idea is this is going to set anyhow for two more weeks so the next time you see us i'll be showing you what happens if i just put a color coat over this and blend it in it won't match so that's why we're going to take it from corner to corner anyway until i see you guys again that'll be about 
Oh, quite a while. This has got to cure. Okay, guys, back again. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a while. Uh, show you what I was planning on doing anyhow, guys. I was going to uh, apply this, this finish over everything that we've done. This is, this is the finish that they started off with. It's a drive it. I think it's a French vanilla. I'm not sure. The owner picked this particular color up. But originally he had said, Jay Kirk, can you uh, just go over the patch and make it blend in? And I said, no. In fact, what I need to do is spread the, the entire patch out. And as I spread the entire patch out, float it, then re-skim the whole wall. Otherwise, what I'll have is ghosting effect. And you'll say, what the heck is ghosting effect? Well, if I was to take another finish and just go over this whole thing, these patches could show through. We in the trades call that ghosting effect. So, okay, that being said, this being done, I'll show you what I'm referring to. Now, I've just got to float this in. Okay, that's done. I take a sponge float, water bucket, get some of that out, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm floating this in. Now, in about an hour, maybe two hours, I'm going to come back to this wall and show you folks what I'm referring to when I say ghost in effect, because although this is the same color, and although it's one of the better acrylics on the market, drive it, and that's one of the better ones uh, as an applicator, trust me, it's still, even 20 years later, it's going to leave some kind of a different shade. I've done reds, blues, almost every different color, and drive it makes a good one where you can come back years later and do a patch within a patch. However, if that patch within a patch has, say, uh, uh, aged because of working in your backyard dust and things of that nature, well, then it's time to redo the whole wall. So I'm going to leave this at that. And then when you see me again, this is going to be completely dry. Of course, I'm going to do this patch too. And what we're probably going to end up doing is pulling that downspout and going from this corner to that corner and doing it. But I just want to show you folks how 20 years later on acrylic finish what it'll look like to one that was done previously 20 years. So we'll see how that goes. Okay guys, no ghost in effect. That's a good product. What I did is I floated this joint here into this joint here and floated it and floated everything. No ghosting effect. That is an excellent product. Uh, we should have had it. But we're all prepared here anyhow to go ahead and skim from here. The fella doesn't want to pull that pipe and I don't blame him, it's riveted. So we're gonna spread the whole thing out right to that corner wall anyway. Um, Tim is gonna go ahead and start spreading and then I'm gonna float right behind him. We'll show you how we do that too, guys. Okay, we're watching paint dry. Come on, Tim. What we're gonna do, guys, because we're in pretty hot weather is if we took this joint all the way across and we'd have a joint here. So Tim is doing that little area. Let me float this and then he's going to start from the bottom and take it up. This way we don't have a joint. Go ahead, Tim. Beautiful. All right, Tim's taking it all the way to the bottom. When I grow up, I want to be able to plaster just like Tim. You're the man. Beautiful. One man float, the other man spread. That's the way to do it. And when I'm 
I'm bored, I got nothing better to do. I can keep myself busy, occupied, and like pull some red tape. Ooh. Keep going uh, about another two feet, Tim, then you can do the top. Beautiful. Okay guys, we are putting the final finish on this wall. And although earlier it, it didn't show that there was some ghosting effect, uh, the reason it didn't because there wasn't, but we still had some discolorations up here. So I only took it to this point. If in the, in the early morning sun, it would have shown from here up. So we went ahead and skimmed the entire wall. That's how you do it if you're going to do patchwork to eliminate any ghosting effects. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk. I'm with Kirk Giordano Plastering, Jason on the camera. We thank you folks for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next Stucco Fix.